you, Senator Pratt, Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for coming today. Could I, before I get onto my line of questions, could I uh, just have clarification because I wasn't paying attention when you were answering uh, Senator Pratt? Is UK waste currently being brought in? So it's um, waste that originated as fuel in the high fire reactor, which was sent to the UK for reprocessing. Okay. Um, and so we, we sometimes use a shorthand that says it's the UK waste, but actually it's Australian waste repackaged into a TN81 container that needs to come back to Australia. Thank you. That's what I thought you said, but then the way you said it. I, I wanted to make it yeah. yeah, thank, thank you, you. Uh, um, Senator. So could you please state for Hansard Record, what is the total budget allocation for ANSTO in this financial year? We'll get that figure now. Thank you. While that's coming, I'll happily take some other questions. Okay, what is the estimated size of Australia's uranium deposits? So at the uh, present time, Australia's uranium deposits um, represent 30% of uh, global uranium. Uh, I'll supply uh, the tonnage that's uh, assumed to be based on the geology work that's been done uh, uh, as a supplementary um, uh, submission. Uh, so therefore, Australia holds a very large and significant portion of the world's uranium that is accessible and known. But, but you don't know the tonnage? You, you, you're going to send it? It's to very it. difficult to convert it directly into, into a tonnage because it's more the amount of material relative to the mineral holdings as opposed to the tonnage of uranium that could be used for a purpose. Okay, so how do you normally estimate the size of reserves? So the reserves are, are estimated um, as the percentage of extractable uranium from the different, uh, from the different holdings. And mm -hmm. so the estimate, which is primarily, primarily Olympic Dam as a major holding, but um, others around Australia, is associated with uh, that figure of 30%. Okay, so there's... Yeah. Great. So in terms of the uh, budget estimates for the 2019-2020 uh, year, uh, the total net resourcing for ANSTO um, uh, in the uh, portfolio additional estimates and statements is $445.722 million. Thank you. So coming back to uh, reserves, you need to calculate some unit before yep. you can know it's 30 per cent of the world. What, yep. What's the unit? So typically the two units that are used uh, would be uh, uranium oxide um, mm -hmm. or uh, in the form of yellow cake. The, and uh, we'll provide both the estimates to you. Thank you. With current nuclear power generation, what do Australia's uranium deposits represent in terms of potential power generation? In terms of electric power generation, I haven't done that calculation, but for example, when the range of mine was operating at full capacity and exporting, it was producing from the uranium that was converted into fuel, um, enough fuel capacity to provide about 2% of global electricity. Just from Ranger? Just from Ranger. So what percentage of that would, no, it's, there's none, that was it. <laughs> okay. yeah. Is there an estimate uh, on figures or figures available to ANSTO in regards to the amount of uranium mined in Australia for the previous year? We can uh, provide that and our colleagues at Geosciences Australia I think could also okay. confirm it. Okay, thank yeah, you. Senator, so yeah, Geosciences Australia might be able to help you and our resources team are on later this evening as well who might be able to assist. Okay, in case I can't make it because I've got others, um, could that be sent we'll to take me? We'll take it on we'll that too. Thank you. Thanks, uh, I'd like to make reference to ANSTO's submission 166 to the Standing Committee on the Environment and Energy's inquiry into the prerequisites for nuclear energy in Australia. On page four, there is reference to generation four reactors. Could you clarify if there are currently generation four reactors in, in operation? And secondly, are they commercially operational or operational in a demonstrative capacity? So generation four reactors are not commercially available at present. Um, they are conceptual reactors which are part of that forum. Uh, and the uh, estimated earliest adoption uh, post the Generation 4 International Forum is of the order of 2035. You can read my mind. <laughs> Could you identify specific uh, contributions ANSTO has made to the Generation 4 International Forum in terms of the, of the design of viable Generation 4 reactors? 
So we contribute in general to the design studies. We have out of the generation four designs chosen to work on the very high temperature reactor, which is a gas cooled reactor and the sodium cooled reactor. They two of the important generation four designs. And so we contribute to uh, materials engineering uh, background knowledge in order to support uh, the development of those reactors. We've chosen the very high temperature reactor because it operates at high temperature and that is a challenge to reactors and so that's where knowledge is being developed reactively. And we've chosen the molten salt reactor because it is a high flux reactor. It has lots and lots of neutrons going through the material. So we've chosen both temperature and flux uh, as the two areas to concentrate on for the future. Thank you. Uh, last question. Uh, activists make a lot of noise about carbon dioxide. I don't see any evidence that carbon dioxide is connected to global temperature changes and we don't believe there is a warming trend because the data doesn't show that as a result of Australia's carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So I'll put that aside, I just want to make that clear um, for Hansard's purposes. We're asking this, does nuclear power generate any carbon dioxide at the point of energy generation? So the, um, the uh, production... It comes in every time. Um, the, the production of uh, nuclear energy in uh, the generation three plus uh, reactors uh, at the point of electricity production is essentially at about the same level as wind turbines and solar panels uh, and therefore has a low carbon footprint. Okay. Over the life cycle of a nuclear power plant and including the construction phase, how much carbon dioxide is produced per kilowatt hour of electricity generated? I can get the exact figure, but it's in the same range as wind turbines and solar panels. Wind is actually pretty high, but how does the carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour nuclear energy compare to other methods of electricity generation? It's fairly similar to hydro, um, and depending on how the calculation is made in the jurisdiction in which it's operating, uh, and there are a few other factors, it's generally uh, lower or uh, lowest class in terms of carbon dioxide generation. And, and in terms of um, the cost per... OK, no, that's fine. So per kilowatt hour, uh, so it's difficult for me to estimate in a reasonable way across the all jurisdictions the cost per kilowatt hour, mm. but the, um, the ability to mitigate uh, carbon dioxide with, uh, with nuclear power is uh, demonstrable from International Energy Agency data and it is a very effective uh, mitigator of carbon dioxide. And uh, the so, cost Senator in Roberts, terms of dollars per is kilowatt hour? Is this your last question? Last one. Dollars per kilowatt hour, that's... Um... So uh, I'm not an expert in this field, uh, but we, we can source uh, some publicly available information which might be able to assist you, Senator. Thank you.